Now, as we go through this talk, I want you to remember something. If we don't open our mouths, if we don't open our mind, then we won't be able to feed ourselves the necessary information so that we can be successful. We won't be able to get the wisdom and experience from others so that we can take that next step, okay? Now, I need to gauge how hungry this crowd is, all right? There's $20 on this stage, right here. If anybody wants it, they can come get it. Hold up, hold up, come in, come in, come in. All right, all right. We're here, I'm trying to tell you on me. What's your name? Elijah Robertson. Elijah? Robertson, yeah. Robertson, Elijah Robertson, Mr. Robertson. I did not expect <laughs> that type of response, but I appreciate it. Y'all are pretty hungry. Um, all right, Elijah, tell me, what motivated you to come up here? Free money. Free money, yeah. right? It was easy, right? Yeah. All right, everybody give Elijah a round of applause. Oh man, this is a hungry crown, I love it. I love it. Now, let me ask you guys, okay? What are some of the reasons you think as to why some of you didn't run up here and try to get this $20? Shout them out. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Raise your hand, raise your hand. What is it? Why, why didn't you? What'd you, right here? Huh? Stuck in the middle. Maybe it wasn't advantageous for you to come out, right? You couldn't just jump across all these people and try to get it. Right? What's another reason? Huh? You didn't want to trip, right? You, may, you were afraid that you may fall on the way up. Or maybe one of these guys might run you over, right? Okay. What about you? Huh? They're not hungry. They don't want it. Maybe it felt better to stay in your chair, right? That's $20. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a scam anyways. Maybe he's gonna make me do something. How about this? How about maybe you were afraid that you were going to be judged? Maybe last night at Thirsty Thursday, you had, you had a little too much, and you didn't want people to see you and be embarrassed, right? These are reasons why people don't take advantage of opportunities because they don't want to be judged. How many times have you said that? I don't want to participate in this. I'm not going to say that because I don't want to be judged, okay? And this started way back. Remember Adam and Eve? They were hanging out butt naked in the, in the garden, right? And then they ate from the knowledge tree, and then they realized that they were naked and then they covered themselves because they didn't want to be judged. How many times has somebody said to you, always make a good first impression, right? So you've been conditioned to care about what other people think. And this isn't a talk about not caring about what people think. This is you not avoiding it because it's going to happen anyways. Aristotle once said, there is only one way to avoid criticism. Do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing, okay? Maybe people are, say, are gonna say that you're lame because you didn't participate in tonight's events and you decided to study instead. Maybe you're gonna be called a nerd because you stay in the library three or four, or maybe even a week in advance of a test to make sure that you are successful, okay? And so, if you want to avoid that, then just don't do anything. Don't go to Pace on Mondays. Don't, don't go to the tutoring center when you need help because you're gonna be judged no matter what you do, okay? What about, my man said here, he said that, you know, it was too much to get out, right? I was in the middle. It was disadvantage for me to come out around, amongst all these people, and I may not even get the money, right? I can't tell you how many people 
decide not to put in work, not to go that extra mile, because they feel like it's too much work, right? Thomas Edison once said, opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work. How many times has your professor said, hey man, if you study this, it's gonna take a little while for you to get, but if you do, you're gonna be there and you're gonna be ready when it comes, to, when it comes test time. But you didn't do it. You were like, man, I'll, I'll do that the night before. I don't, need to, I don't need to do this, right? That actually happens in work. Look, I have my PhD. I, the reason, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys up here, so hopefully you're okay with that. The reason I didn't become a professor was because I didn't want to have to work the long hours, okay? Professors are, your professors, they're grading at night. They're doing a lot of extra things. Dr. Yin, okay, he's not teaching right now, right? And he, t and he put in effort in order to make this happen, right? They work all the time. So I went into industry so I could get an eight to five, right? But then I found out that I'm actually gonna have to put in extra work. Now I could be like some of y'all, oh, I don't, look, I'm gonna figure it out at work. It'll be all good. But no, I wanna be successful, okay? I wanna do great so I be great, right? And so I decided to work outside of my eight to five, and that's why I was able to, in nine months, okay, I was able to increase my salary by over 30%, okay? because I was on a project with somebody who said I did a good job and he had his own company. And he said, I wanna bring you on. And from that, I was able to greatly increase my success, okay? So don't be lazy, all right? Maybe it is gonna be really tough, okay, to get out your seat, but, but try anyways, okay? Now lastly, by a show of hands, got a question. How many of you thought that maybe it was fake? Right, right. Maybe that was Monopoly money, yeah. Liger, where's Liger at? That $20 real? It is, it is, it is. He didn't even check, he was just like, yeah, $20, let's go. Right, right, yes, yeah, it is, it is. Okay, all right. But even if you did think it was a scam or maybe it was fake or something like that, why didn't I hear somebody say, hey man, is that real? Is that all I gotta do is just come up there and get this $20, is that all I have to do? How many times do we not do that? We just, based on our feelings, how we feel, we just assume that it's not for us. We assume that people aren't for us. Right? And then we don't ask for help. We don't go up there and say, hey, I'm having trouble with this, can you help me? I don't know if you don't like me or not, but I need you to help me, right? Because we assume, okay? And what, what do they say about people who assume? Makes a butt out of you and me, right? Okay? Now, those are three key reasons I think people do not take advantage of opportunities that are presented to them, okay? Because number one, they don't wanna be judged, they don't wanna be embarrassed, they don't wanna put themselves in situations where they're uncomfortable, right? Right? I heard somebody say, we like to stay in our bubble where we are king. We like to stay where we're comfortable, right? Nobody's gonna judge us. What do we do with our best friends? We tell them all of our secrets and all that stuff because they're our best friends. Those, they're our close friends, right? And so we trust them, we don't fear them, and we don't care if they give us criticism because, because we're close to them, right? Well, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter who you tell, they're gonna judge you. Your best friend, they're judging you. They're just not giving you some of the consequences you think other people will give you, right? And that, the next thing was, don't be lazy, work hard, okay? Go the extra mile, go talk to your professors, okay? Go do these things because you never know, 
You never know when somebody is going to be able to help you. Okay? And lastly, don't assume. Okay? Don't make a butt out of yourself. Okay? Now, how can you relate? Now, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to be very honest with you guys up here. Um, because a lot of times I think when speakers come, you think, oh man, that guy, you know, he makes millions of dollars. He may be a little bit older. Let me tell you, I, I'm 28, so I've been around, I've been out of here for about six years, seven years. And I don't make a million dollars, okay? So what I do, what I've achieved, you can too, right? It was actually a panel earlier where there was a brilliant man, a brilliant man who got one of the Alumni Achievement Awards, right? And he was brilliant, right? People said it, even before he got here, he was brilliant, right? That wasn't me. A lot of you are like me, right? You're trying to figure it out, right? Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I started out, <clears throat> I was birthed by a single mother. Um, my, my dad actually wasn't even on my birth certificate. And I was born in Huntsville, Alabama, okay? By the time I was four, we moved out of my grandmother's house where we had lived the previous four years. And we moved in with one of my mom's abusive boyfriends, okay? From there, we actually were homeless for a little bit. We actually stayed at the Salvation Army, okay? And then from there, when I was eight, we moved into the projects and which sometimes, even though at a severely discounted rate, our utilities sometimes got cut off, okay? And by the time I was in middle school, I, was just, I just wanted to get out. I went to school, we went to public school, I couldn't participate in everything, but I was in band, okay? In sixth grade, in seventh grade, when I could start playing sports, I was playing football, I was playing track. Even though I'm super short, I was the water boy for the basketball team. Because I didn't make it, I tried out. <laughs> okay? But I did everything I could to get out. Okay? And then, after middle school, when I got to high school, actually right before middle school, I moved out of my mother's house and moved in with one of my aunts. I don't know if, if how some of your hoods are, but she really wasn't my aunt. It was just a family, you know, just a friend, right? But everybody's your cousin when you're in the hood, right, sometimes, right? And so I moved in with my aunt, and because she was caring and loving, okay, she took in like everybody. There was like 12 of us in the house at any point in time. It was like sardines, people who were alcoholics, people who were on drugs, all that stuff. I was around that all the time, okay? And again, I wanted to get out. So in high school, I did the same thing. I was in band, I was in football. Uh, because I couldn't make the basketball team, this time I wrestled because I had that opportunity, okay? But, let me ask you, what do you think my GPA was in high school? Dr. George Langford, what was my GPA? What was it? One nine. One nine. Dang, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was about a two seven three zero, right? Right? And by the grace of God, I was able to get into the Grange College. But, my goals, my aspirations weren't to become a math major. It wasn't to, to uh, solve cancer or I wanted to do something cool like go to the league. I wanted to go to the NFL. I'm 5'6", 165 pounds soaking wet thinking that this middle linebacker is going to go, okay? <laughs> right? I had, I had some accolades coming out of high school thinking I was going to do something. When they told me I could come to LaGrange to play football, I, I trained, I trained so hard right before I got here. I trained so hard, I was, I'm about to show these boys how we play, right? I'm about to show them, right? I got to camp in August, fourth strain. <laughs> Excuse me, fourth strain, okay? I wasn't even a backup. I didn't even make the bus, guys, right? And so, at this moment, I could have thought my dreams were shattered. I wasn't ever going to be able to play. I wasn't, I should give up. But no, I didn't. 
Actually, I worked hard at it. I gained some weight. I went from linebacker to safety. And by my senior year, I was a starter. Okay? And my sophomore year, my second year, I was able to participate in the first ever win for the Grange College. As Dr. Yen said earlier, we were 0-20 our first two years. My first year, it's because I wasn't playing that first year, that's why. But <laughs> that's neither here nor there. But my second year, I was able to participate in our first ever win. But it didn't come from me being great. It didn't come from me having the natural genetics that some of you might have, right? I worked hard. I asked the coaches how I could be better, how I could be great. And they gave me tools. I got in the film room. I learned to outsmart our competitors. I used my height to my advantage and my speed. Okay. Now, let's, let's get to LaGrange, okay? I, so when I first started here, um, I was a business major, okay? And <laughs> uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Dr. Yen told you I was in his class from 8 to 9.30. I was in Calculus 1. And I think from about 8.05 to 9.30, I was asleep, right? I was knocked out. Actually, it got so bad that Dr. Yen one time came to my desk and said, are you all right? Should you go back to your dorm? I was a terrible student, okay? I didn't study very much. I didn't do any of those things. But then I saw Dr. Yin actually in the calf one day, and I asked him to sit with him for lunch. And he told me this story. He told me about his dad, who was a jet fighter pilot in Taiwan, how he came to actual Taiwan, okay? So his dad was originally from Hong Kong, okay? And this was right after World War II where it was a pretty war-torn country and his uncle sent him to Taiwan on a boat with a one-way ticket saying, there's nothing back here for you. That changed my life. Because for me, there wasn't anything to go back to. And I think a lot of you it's that way too. There isn't anything to go back to except for that cyclic nature that all your homies back home or your friends or whatever, where they get stuck and they don't move, right? And so I took that to heart. I started to focus a little bit more on my education. I knew that I probably wasn't going to the league at this point, so NFL for some people, I don't know. And I knew that I needed to figure it out. So I started to study more. I started to go to study groups. I started to go to the career center. I started to go to places like Pace and things like this so that I could be get better. I started asking more questions, okay? And actually, how many of you have school loans? Yeah, buddy, right? It's expensive to go here, right? I tried because people had told me, Hey man, it's expensive to go here. You get all these school loans, you're gonna be paying on them for the rest of your life. And so what I did was I made friends with the financial aid ladies, right? Actually, one of them in the back here. It was mainly her, okay? And she told me some of the things that other students had did so that they could lower their loans. Different scholarships I could apply to. If I kept my grades up, then I could get this particular scholarship, right? She also told me about being an RA. Okay, how many RAs are in here? Just a couple, okay? I know there's not many on campus. But that was to help me with the housing costs, right? So that I could lower that, okay? And not only did I do that, I tried to figure out a way to become an RA, okay? I talked to the dean of students, okay? Again, you see, you see I'm talking to people. I'm opening my mouth so I can be fed, right? So I can get this money, so that this easy money, okay? And the dean of students said, hey, if you want to do this, we usually give the RA positions to people who are known on campus. So I started a chess club. I joined the social council. 
I was the SGA VP. I did all these things. It wasn't just because I wanted to be popular. It wasn't because I wanted to make a whole bunch of friends. It's because I knew eventually I'm going to leave here and having all these loans is going to put me behind and I didn't want to be behind. Okay? And so, again, I'm similar to you guys though. I made some mistakes. I was trying to chase these honeys around. You know, it's LaGrange, a small, small amount of honeys. Small school, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Small school, small school, all right? I'm not knocking anybody, okay? But, but I still, I made some mistakes, okay? I wasn't perfect, all right? Let me give you an example, all right? I was working on some research with one of my research advisors, with my research advisor, and I was supposed to publish a paper with him, right? But I didn't come through by the deadline, right? And it was my fault, right? So you know what I did? I didn't say, oh, well, it is what it is and it ain't what it ain't. I went and told him and talked to him and I apologized, right? Because it affects him too. What you do now affects not just you, it, can, it affects people around you. Right? Actually, I want to tell you a quick story just to kind of show you where I've gotten. So I used to have this car, okay? And they call it, they call it the Smurf. Look, somebody knows about it. They call it the Smurf, right? And you can see it's kind of rusting on the top. Um, and you know, like the white hats and stuff like that. And I used to ride this thing around. I put some beat in there. I thought I was doing something, right? Okay. And, and just to kind of show you how life works, because I love this car so much, when I was about to go to grad school, I got it painted, right? I'm, I, it's candy right here, right? And so, and so I thought I was doing something, right? Right after I did this, right after I did this, it broke down. Yeah, I know, right? It broke down. And right before I went to grad school, I was gonna go. I didn't have any car. I don't know if, no, if, I don't know if anybody, anybody in here knows about this, but I was in the dorm this whole time, so I didn't know about security deposits. So when I was going to graduate school, I had to get an apartment, and they wanted a security deposit. They, they didn't want half of it or a piece of it. They wanted the whole thing. And not just that, they wanted the first month's rent, second month's rent, Okay, because I was coming at the end of the month. I was broke. I didn't have a car. And I was, I was pretty down. But instead of just having a pity party for myself, she's not here today. But now President Buchanan, she sent me an email and said, George, how are you doing? She had moved on at this point. She said, how are you doing? And instead of being like, I can take care of my, for myself. I can figure it out. You know what I did? I said, things ain't so good. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to get up to Raleigh so I can go to graduate school. And from that email, from talking to her, a whole bunch of professors came through for me. I ended up actually getting another car because they helped me out. Because they knew that I was trying to help myself and people love to help people who help themselves, right? And I was able to get the money that I needed in order to get my apartment. Now, fast forward to now, post-PhD George, I drive a 2017 Lexus, right? Okay? That I pay for. I take care of it, right? Now, <clears throat> I've had a lot of people be with me throughout my life. A lot, of, a lot of people, especially through the college, board of trustee members, people who, if I wouldn't have had a good attitude and talked to, told them about myself, people wouldn't know. A lot of your stories are just like mine. You're struggling to make it. You're, str you're struggling to, to figure it out. And even if you weren't like mine, you're still here so that you can get an education and you can be successful later, right? And so if you want to make it, then you're going to have to, what? Open what? 
your mouth, right? So that you can be fed, okay? Now, when I got to graduate school, I met one of the most important people in my life, my mentor. And it's very important that you guys seek out these mentors because they're far and in between. But he taught me things about honesty, being in being, having integrity, okay? Being dependable. People wanna work with people and help people who have those three qualities, okay? So if you're not dependable, if you're always late, people can't take your word as, as bond, then people are just gonna ignore you. They're gonna ignore your cries for help. And I don't want that to be you, and it doesn't have to be, okay? And if you act right and do the right things, you can go from this, this is where I stayed, that Salvation Army I told you about before. Nah, I'm lying, that ain't me. <laughs> you, know, you know who that is? That's Beyonce's place. I, I just, I, I don't know. I just, I... I'm 28, man. I just graduated last year. I told you I wasn't a millionaire. Come on, man. All right. All right. Now, <clears throat> there are three keys I think you need in order to be successful, okay? In order to nourish yourself, okay? Those three keys are you need to be, you need to be coachable, you need to be persistent, and you need to be prepared, okay? When I say coachable, I mean you need to listen. How many times has somebody been talking to you and then you, you sitting there like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and then what you say? Man, that's crazy, right? <laughs> right? Because you hearing them, you hearing them, but you're not listening. You're not internalizing it, right? Let me tell you something that a lot of you can relate to. Who's the quarterbacks in here, right? How many people agree that they're the most important person on the offense? Raise your hand. Yeah, nobody, everybody's like, nah, I ain't me. Nah, right? Only the quarterbacks raise their hand, right? But how many people know how important the center is? Right? Right? How many people know that the center's the reason for five people to be on the same page? They're gonna be telling, they're, they're the ones informing the quarterback, hey, maybe this guy's coming. Hey guys, we're sliding to the left. Hey guys, we're sliding to the right, okay? This guy's coming, this guy's not, right? He's in charge of the dummy calls, right? Right? He's in charge of all of these things. And how many of us have so many sinners in our lives, right? But isn't the quarterback the person who ultimately makes the decision, right? The quarterback is the one who ultimately makes the decision. So if I'm behind center and I see, I'm, I'm in gun, I see this, quarter, this cornerback's weak, and I, and I audible the play so that the receiver does a fade, right? Huh? Bulldogs. Bulldogs, that's what it's called? Bulldogs? Okay, okay. He does that, all right? All right. He does that. But the center, the center may say, hey, man, there's a guy coming off the right. You should watch it. We don't have enough blockers, right? But what do we do sometimes as quarterbacks? That fade. Oh, I'm about to get a touchdown, right? I'm not listening to my center. My center just told me there's a blitz coming from the right, but this wide receiver right here, I'm about to throw it, right? So I hike the ball, I throw it, I'm about to throw it, but the place hasn't developed some, and then I get sacked, right? Because I wasn't listening to my center, right? You need to take measures to make sure that you're actively listening to people that are giving you advice. Don't just hear them, okay? Don't just hear them. And not only that, you need to seek understanding. What do I mean by that? 
How many times has your professor said something in class and you're like, man, I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea what this guy just said, right? But how many of you actually go to the professor and say, hey, professor so-and-so, I, I don't really understand what you just said. I know it's after class. Um, I was wondering if I could get some individual help, right? And then maybe your, maybe your professor is busy that day, but did you know in the tutoring center, I think they have tutors from six to 10, like every day, right? How many people have gone to a tutor? Okay, see? How many of us got 4.0 GPAs? Nah, right? So there's some stuff that we don't understand that we need to seek that understanding, okay? And lastly, to being coachable, is you need to practice, okay? People can tell you all the things in the world, give you all this advice, you are listening like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, yep, you right, you know you right, mm-hmm, I should be doing that, I should be doing that. And then you go back to the room and play 2K, right? <laughs> How many times? As somebody gave you such great advice, me today, I'm telling you exactly my game plan. I told you how to do it, right? But how many are gonna find out how to be an RA, right? How many people are gonna go to the career center or go to Pace, right? You have to practice, you have to. If coach tells you to go watch some film, go watch some film, right? A lot of times, because of my stature, I know I'm 6'7", but sometimes I can't, sometimes I couldn't have made a play unless I knew it was already coming, right? Right? And that's from watching film. That's from practicing. Okay? Another thing about being persistent. For starters, life's not fair. It's not fair for anyone. No one in this room can say that, man, life's been pretty fair to me. I've gotten to do everything anybody else has want, had to do, right? Anybody else has gotten to do, right? Not all of us are born with a million dollars. Not all of us are, more, are born with super high IQ or anything like that. But you have to accept it. My father wasn't even around, right? Life's not fair. I can't. I just have to accept that, right? My father wasn't around to give me a small loan of a million bucks, right? I had to make it on my own, right? Right? And so if you constantly make excuses as to why life's not, life's not fair, you're going to stay stuck. You're going to stay stuck where you are. You're not going to be able to do, you're not going to be able to travel the world. I've been to China, I've been to Jamaica, I've been to quite a few places, I'm 28. You can too, okay? The world doesn't owe you anything. You are not entitled to anything, okay? You can't expect people to do things for you, right? You're an adult now, you're in college, right? The days of holding your hand and your parents calling the teachers and telling them, oh, why isn't my son doing well? That's over. The professor's gonna be like, oh, okay. Right? And so I think that some of us, especially who've been brought up with good homes, right? They've been able to hold your hand throughout and say, oh, you know, son, I, I got you through this. Or sweetheart, I got you through this or what have you, right? People aren't gonna do that as much here. And especially if you don't tell anybody that you're having an issue, right? And so, I hope that one of the key things that you get from this is that I have to make it on my own merit, right? Right? I have to do this. Because if I don't, then I'm the only one who suffers. I'm not going to be a person that sits around and stays stuck. Okay? 
Now, I told you earlier I was 6'7", right? Give or take a few feet, right? Okay. And I know a lot of times in uh, the media, social media, you hear people say, you can be anything you want to be, you put your mind to it. Look, fellas, I'm never going to be LeBron James. I'm not. I'm never going to be MJ. I'm never going to be Dante Hightower or uh, Cam Newton. I don't have those specs. But you know what? I can be George Langford. I can be Dr. George Langford. I actually became that, right? I'm not saying to not aspire, not to dream. What I am saying is that focus on being the best you, right? And maybe it's not in your cards. You've got to be realistic, OK? Maybe some of us are not going to make those 32 times 55 teams uh, be one of those 32 times 55 players, 32 NFL teams, 55 players on the roster, OK? Maybe I'm not going to be that. I think there's over 300 D3 schools, right? Over 100 D1 schools. Maybe, maybe, not saying it is or it isn't, maybe I should focus on my education. Or maybe I should focus on my music career, whatever, right? Maybe I should do that. But while I'm in at LaGrange, while I'm here in school, OK, I'm going to focus on bettering myself in that manner. I'm going to make sure I have a plan B. I always like to have a plan always like to have a plan. It's really hard for me to be spontaneous sometimes because it makes me nervous. It's risky. Okay? And I'm not saying don't take risks. All I'm saying is that if you don't invest in yourself, how are you supposed to prosper? How are you supposed to gain wealth if you don't even invest in yourself? Okay? So, <clears throat> All right, last couple of things. I want you to find the correct perspective, okay? Find the correct perspective. I can say, oh, I don't have as much money as I want, or I can talk about how I can build myself up, how I can build my wealth, right? Don't focus on just where you are, focus on where you wanna be, okay? And look, life is not always gonna be easy. Life's not always gonna be all rosy, and it's really easy to be happy when things are good, but they're not always going to be, right? And so if you don't change your perspective, find that correct perspective, then it's going to be hard for you when the times come down, when things aren't going the way you want them to. And that's, that happens all the time, okay? But you can't take it personal. You can't take it personal. It's life. It's going to happen, but you can't give up. You can't. If you give up on yourself, what do they say? Winners never quit and quitters never win, right? And you're the quarterback. This is your life. You're the head coach. You're the wide receiver. You're, the, you're all of it, right? And if you quit on yourself, that's it, right? That's how I got here. Again, I wasn't brilliant. I wasn't the, you know, I was able to get calculus student of the, uh, calculus, uh, student of the year and all these things. I was able to get my PhD, not because I had the super IQ. It's because I worked hard. That's what it was. I worked hard and I asked for help when I needed it. Being prepared, okay? You never know who is watching. How many people have a Facebook, right? How many people post on that Facebook like all the time? Well, only one person gonna admit, y'all, okay, all right. Who I, people who, or maybe it's Instagram or I don't know, back, all right, Instagram, Facebook, social media, right? Snapchat, right? You never know who is actually watching you, okay, right? Because people, especially professors, or people who will potentially be resources later, they're watching. 
Make sure that you're putting stuff on social media and on platforms that people are going to see you. Make sure you're putting good things because it could come back to bite you, okay? Let me take me for example. I used to post everything. My, my Facebook was my Twitter, okay? I used to have all these statuses. Man, things aren't going well. Things are trash. I can't, I don't know why, you know, why is life doing this to me, et cetera, et cetera. And then I started to realize, man, nobody cares, <laughs> right? Nobody cares, okay? Put stuff that's building yourself up. Network, okay? Make sure that you're making friends or being friends with people who are going to look highly upon you and you'd look highly upon them, okay? All right? You never know when it's your time to shine. Let me tell you a story real quick. So when I got my PhD last year, I was looking for a job and I didn't know if anybody was going to give me a final offer. I had this I knew that I, I had this plan that I was going to work for the NSA, okay? Does anybody remember what NSA stands for? National Security Agency, all right? Maybe you should apply there in the future, right? But I thought I was going to go work there, but I hadn't had anything final. And I went to this career fair, this convention in Boston called the, for the National Society for Black Engineers. All right, they have this huge career fair where they have all these different companies come. And I went there and I got all these interviews while I was there. And then I was walking back to my hotel and I was on the elevator. Who's a, who all has an elevator pitch? All right? How long is it supposed to be? Like 30 seconds, right? And so in those 30 seconds, I saw this guy, I started talking, you know, I like to talk. I was like, hey, how's it going? What's going on? He was like, hey, man, wh why are you here? What are you up to? I said, uh, well, I'm, I'm getting my PhD in applied mathematics. My concentration is in high energy physics and biological modeling. And I'm looking to be a data scientist. 30 seconds. I got out the elevator. He gave me his card. Two weeks later, he contacted me. We started talking. I defended. The next week on the Monday, he said, hey, man, is it okay if I give you my, give your information to this company called Lidos, right? I was like, sure, I don't have a final offer from anywhere. I had defended, I didn't have a job yet, right? And he gave me, he gave that information. That Wednesday, they called me. That Thursday, I got my first six-figure job, okay? And it was all because of that elevator pitch. Always be ready. You never know when it's your time to shine. Okay? A lot of you, if, so, if you came out of here and somebody said, hey, man, what do you do? Some of you would be like, I'm just going to school, right? Tell them I major in business or I major in pre-dentistry or whatever. And tell them what you have. Go have goals for yourself. You need to be prepared because you never know. That, that next person that you're talking to, he may be the person that gives you the internship that changes your life. Okay? All right? Failing the plan is the plan to fail. And not only that, you're in your career right now. Right now. That when he told you about the career center stuff, that was my freshman year. Because I knew that I was going to leave here. I already had a resume. Right? I knew that as soon as I left here and I left all my friends and I left my bubble, people are going to need to know my name and I'm going to need to know what I'm trying to get to. I need to know what my goals are. Right? And at that time, I was trying to get to this money. Right? Just like that $20. I wanted to take advantage of the opportunities when they came for me, especially those I didn't see. Right? Somebody told me once that success comes when preparation meets opportunity, okay? If you're not prepared when that opportunity comes, it's going to fly you by, All right? Somebody else is going to get it. You're not going to know or have the wherewithal to sit on the front wall so you can get the 20 bucks, 
right? So be prepared, okay? Now, somebody tell me where the career center is. Somebody. Smith Hall, what floor? First. First floor, right? And in case you didn't hear that man, this is where your career development center is. The director is Dr. Karen Pruitt. There's her phone number. You want me to send these slides to you? I can, okay? All right. All right. How many people know about PACE? How many people have been there? Okay. Now, I, I heard through the grapevine that some of you aren't coming maybe on the Mondays and you need that math help, right? And I'm telling you, you have the director of the department coming and being able to tutor you on Mondays. Look, it's not, it's not even like, you know, he's not only, you know, taking out time out of his day, okay? He's saying, I'm devoting it to you so that you can be successful, okay? And so if you want to academically grow, actually, before I get there, somebody tell me where Pace is. Of where? CAB. Of the CAB, just in case you didn't hear it. There it is. Coordinator is Lauren Hill. Phone number is there, okay? Look, in closing, I hope that you guys got something from this. I don't know if it got to everybody. I don't know if you're gonna take this to heart, you're gonna listen, you're gonna seek understanding, you're gonna practice, but what I will say is that you can't say that nobody told you, right? Nobody gave you the game plan. So after you leave here, and if you don't practice, okay, then it's on you, but I hope you will. Because if we open our mouths, then what? We'll get fed. So let's eat.